So we use classes to really implement complex data types, but often you can use dictionaries for complex data types too. Often the data types become more interesting if you actually also have additional uh, functions and methods that operate on that data. So generally, if you think about it, a class is data plus methods or functions. Sometimes you can choose to create a class even if you don't have any functions just to simplify certain things. But often you have functions that will allow you to do many different things. So we have learned that there are functions that you can write that operate only on that data. And there are some functions that are standard functions that you can define or redefine for that data type. So these are the functions that almost all classes in Python have. So these are kind of standard functions, but they are not defined for your class unless you actually write a definition for them. So, um, so generally, you always think about a class as basically your data description, which is what are the attributes that you will have for an object of that class. So this is where you think about the attributes to store. Then you're going to think about, OK, what are some very basic things that I would like to do that would apply? And in fact, a lot of classes have standard methods. So the standard methods have to do with printing some object. So you have SDR, which allows you to print. You have, for example, add that allows you to add two objects. You have subtract. You also have uh, operations that allow you to compare two objects, things like equal and less than and so on. So anytime it's a standard uh, function, Python refers to standard functions with two underscores first and then two underscores at the end. So you have seen this in underscore underscore main, right? That was a uh, property, an attribute of all programs. In the same way, all function, all um, objects generally have functions that return a string representation of that object, can add to objects, and there are some conventions for some of those, and we will talk about that. And often you also have additional methods that basically don't fall into one of these, but are going to be very useful anytime you work with that data. And you basically will define those also, but you generally will give them new uh, you know, functions like distance, um, magnitude, etc. Right? So every time you write a um, class, these are the things that we have to think about. And generally, you write classes so that they are generic. They apply to lots of different instances. In fact, think about that. You may use a class that you write for one homework for a new and future homework. Eventually, when you become, you know, when you go and work outside, you will see that you will actually design classes to be used many, many times. So because of that, you generally write a class inside a new function, but you don't have to. So we will talk about how you can um, put a class inside a file and then use it in another file. Okay. So last time we were working on points. So. Let me try to read that up. So this was the example we were working on with a little bit more uh, methods edit. So for every class, you have to write an initialization method, which is what it creates the object itself, and often where you define what are the attributes that are going to be attached to your object. And often you don't want to add other attributes as you operate because 
from a perspective of programmer, when I want to understand a class, I just go to the init part and it will explain all the attributes that class uses. So I don't need to really uh, search different functions because this is the function that will always be called when you create an object and all the uh, data types, all the attributes should be defined here. So for a point, we said that we need an X and a Y point. But these X and Y are going to be attributes that are attached to the object. So the way that we did that was the self method. So generally, we create, we write functions for um, classes that basically has function name and self. But this is just a variable name. It can be anything, but self is the convention. And variables like x and y, right? For example, we had init, self, x and y. So init is the method that is called when you create a new object, like pt point to d. And when you create an object like that, the first variable is always going to be mapped to this one. Self is always the object itself. And then these two will be mapped to these two. And then you can, for example, say that self is this bag. Inside this bag, I can, I'm going to have a variable called x, self.x, and it will have this value x, and self.y is going to have this value y. Okay? So every time you define a function, the first argument is always referring to the object itself. If you did not, then you don't have any way to take the object and find the attributes that are attached to it. So um, if you wanted to do other things, like, for example, find the length of an object, again, you have to send the object itself, and then this will return you self x square, self y square, and the square root of that. So if I were to, uh, when I run this, now this class is actually loaded, but we will uh, do more. So, for example, I can create a new point like this. So, this calls the init function and attaches 10 to self.x and 20 to self.y. If I wanted to return the string representation of A uh, object, I can do this. Somebody asked this on Piazza. If you want to call the string function, you can do it like this. And this pt1 always will be mapped to self, the first argument, and this has no other arguments. This will return the string representation. But since it is underscore underscore, Python has a shortcut for how to call this. So actually, if you were to call str of uh, point 0.1, it will also call the same function. It basically has two different ways to go to the same function. And in fact, if you were to write print pt1, it will call the function str, get the result, and print the result of it. Okay? This is just a shorthand that Python has for any function that you define as underscore underscore str underscore underscore. Okay? <coughs> We have defined another function called distance that takes two different variables, two different objects. So self is one object, other is the other object. So let's try a second one. So I'm going to try create a second object, point to D, um, let's say 30 and 40. So I have point one and point two. If you want, you can print point one and point two. So now I can find the distance of one to the other by calling point one dot distance point two. Okay. 
So again, when you call this, point one is mapped to self here, and point two is mapped to other. Okay? It's important that we get comfortable with the self and other thing. So um, let's just do this one more time. So I have def, def distance, self, and other. So, and I call this as pt1 dot distance pt2. Okay. Always the first object is mapped to the first, the object itself mapped to the self, and pt2 is mapped to the other. Okay. So what this will do is it will find the distance between the x and the y, and it will return you a float. And this should be the same exact thing as pt2 that distance pt1. So another one that we learned was add. You can use the add function to add two different objects. You define what it's supposed to do. But the convention is that add subtract always returns a new object instead of changing the object itself. Because think about this. This is the same thing as many other add functions we have seen. So x plus y returns a new list, and it doesn't change x or y. Or if you had um, um, this, x plus y returns a new string, but it doesn't change x or y. So I'm going to define a function that works exactly the same way, but now on points. It's going to take two points, and it's going to return me the addition of those two points, and it's not going to change either point. So this is how I'm going to define add. Okay. So if I'm adding two points, I can do this in one of two ways. I can create a new point and then add these two values and then return the new one. And I'm going to define the subtract in the other way. So to do subtract, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to actually directly return an object, point to D. So I'm going to create and return an object that has self.x minus other.x and self.y minus other.y. Okay? Both are valid. Both will have the same result. Okay? Meaning that it returns a totally new object with these properties. Okay. So, let's see how we would call these. So, let's create point one. What's my point two? I guess there's a point two from this variable, but uh, let's create that anyway, point two D of 30 and 30, okay. Now I can do the add and the subtract in the same way I did with str. So I can call add of pt2, and it will return me a new, no, it's not pr1, it's pt1. It's going to return me a new point. If I want to see what that point is, I can print it, okay. I have some concerns about this. It should not be 13. Oh, it's because it's P2, not P2, PT2. All right, I was going to say, that makes no sense. OK. There we go. OK. So I can call the function using its shorthand, meaning that any function that I define underscore, underscore, and I can also call with a plus. So. I can also run the same thing with plus, and I can run negative, then that will do uh, subtract. But of course, I can do the same thing. I can call it as subtract, subtract, okay. 
There is a very useless thing that uh, you can actually learn now that you are advanced. This is always possible for anything that you use. So, um, so for example, you can have this. Oh, I thought you could do this. I thought it was possible. All right, I was proven wrong. That was kind of sad. Um, yes, that works. All right. Um, so, are we okay so far? So, you can define functions that are completely um, standalone or functions that overwrite these well known ones. And there's a few others. For example, um, every time you write a um, class, you can describe what it is for two things to be the same. So to do that, you can define equal between self and other. Okay. So when are two objects the same? So you can define the two objects to be the same only if they actually point to the same exact object. Or you can say that they are the same and they have the same value. So there are two different definitions of the same. But let's say that we will say that um, they are same if self.x is equal to self dot other than x dot x and self dot y is equal to other dot y. Okay? And then I'm going to return same. So equal is a Boolean, so it has to return a Boolean. Either they are the same or not. Okay. And you can cut the middleman, and then, yes. Uh, is there a way to define equality as being something else? Like, if they have some You can define it any way you want. You can say that, uh, yeah, they are equal if, you know, they both sound the same. Right, so there's actually this kind of thing you write if you're writing a class for a natural language. So, for example, you can actually query many things that, you know, I wrote this, but it sounds like the other one that's like autocomplete. So you can define your equality like that, for example. Sure. Um, so it's up to you, and you as a programmer have the power. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be equal. And in fact, sometimes it doesn't actually even make sense to have some functions, okay? So let's, uh, let me write this one down, and then I will show you one more. OK? So pt1.2d, uh, 10 and 20, pt2.2d, 25, and pt3, yes. OK? So now I can ask, is pt1 equal to pt2? You can do it by calling the function in the painful way, right? Or you can call them in the easy way, pt1 is equal to pt2. And of course, it knows that not equal to is the reverse of equal to, so not equal to is also defined by equal. Okay. You can also define what it is that one object is less than the other object. Okay. Now, is there a um, natural ordering for two-dimensional objects? I don't think of one, right? So just don't force yourself to define a function if it makes no sense, right? I don't define, I cannot say that one, one two-dimensional uh, point is bigger than the other because it's actually a two-dimensional description, so this is not a good one to define. But for your date class in the lab, you have to define less than. So if you want to be able to do that, um, let's add a simple class just for the sake of argument. And I'm going to do point 1D. So this is going to be a very simple object. But I'm going to actually store an x value and a name for my point. And I always want to have an SDR because it helps to uh, be able to print the contents of a point. 
And I'm going to basically remember that str should always return a string. It should not print the string because you're going to use that string to print. Um, okay, so here's my 1D point. It's kind of a stupid point, but I am going to define what it is for two objects to be ordered. How can I take an object and say that it is less than the other object? I'm going to say that self is less than other if self.x is less than other.x because the name is irrelevant to the ordering. Okay. So let's create a couple of objects. So I am going to actually put them in a list. So I am going to append a number of point 0.1D objects. Hopefully they are actually correct. So one is going to be six and I'm going to call this A. The other one is going to be uh, three and I'm going to call this B. This one is going to be four and I'm going to call that D. And this is going to be one, and I'm going to call that E. So if I um, want to look at these objects, you can see that I can print them. Now, the interesting thing is that I can actually check if, for example, A.0 is less than A.1 because of this less than argument. So is a.0 less than a.1? 6 is not less than uh, 3, so it should be false. How about a.1 is less than a.2? Should be true, right? Okay. So it is now possible to order all the objects in my list? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Well, that means that I can actually sort this list now. Because now there's a way to compare the objects. If I could not compare them, I could not sort them. So what do we expect then the first element to be in the list? What's the smallest one? 1e, right? So that's what we expect. 1e is the first object. This is the second object, third object, and fourth object. In fact, by writing a less than, not only I can compare, but I can run functions that have a comparison component. In fact, some of you have been using this comparison, comparison function. How many of you use that for uh, your homeworks? The, the CMP is equal to something? Some of you, either those people are not here or you're not admitting to it. But you can give sort a method to compare objects because to be able to sort, I need to be able to compare objects. And this is, since my objects now have a comparison, now my sort actually works. So you see how, how powerful it is that by with a simple thing, you can change a lot. So let's try to write a different class, and then we will come to this point 2D in a second. So let's write a different class uh, for time. Okay, so now we have to distinguish between two things. Okay, there is the name of the class, and there is the name of the file that you save something in, right? So um, this class, this file is called point2d.py, right? So, um, so let's distinguish between class. Okay. So for this, this file name is called what? Point to D dot pi. I, I gave my file a name that has a capital P because I expect that I will be using that in, um, you know, as a class definition. So that's why I kind of use this convention, but you can give your file any name you want. And then what are the class names in this, cl in this file? Actually, there are two classes. One is called point 1D, 
and the other one is called point 2D. Probably, I should not actually call it point 2D.py, I should call it points.py, right? So this is going to become important in a second. Just because I name my files the same as class name doesn't mean that it has to be that way. Okay, so let's write the class for time. Okay, so um, and then I can give this any name, but of course I'm going to call it time.py. That is just a, a convention. Okay, so basically in the list. I need to have a class definition, and it's going to have an init, and it's going to have self. I don't know what else, but I'm going to just put a pass here because I know that I want to define that. It's going to have a SDR and a few others. Okay, I'm just putting this as placeholder because I'm going to fill those out in a second. So let's start simple. What, uh, how do you want to create a time class? So I want to store the time of the day so you can tell, for example, how many minutes there is to the end of class and what time something starts, what time something ends, and all of those. So um, if you are defining the time, what attributes do you generally define? Hours, minutes, seconds, okay? So what are the next design decisions? Is hours, minutes, seconds enough? AM, PM. Do I always have to specify AM, PM? Well, you have to decide whether it is military time or not. Do you know about military time? It's the military time all the world uses, except it's something you know, interesting here. So like if above tw tw 12, you keep adding it's military time, otherwise you have to keep track of AM, PM, right? So you have to make a design decision as what you want in your class. Do you want military time or AM, PM? All right, we will do military time because that's actually easier, okay? So if you do military time, I need hour, minute, and second, okay? Um, and since this is time, I'm not going to b worry about, you know, date or anything. So then I need to decide how I'm going to store this information inside my class. Do I need to store it as R, minute, and second? So in fact, I can do this. I can say self.hour is equal to hour, self.minute is equal to minute, self. Uh, second is equal to second or something like this. Let's call this second. Okay, this is one way to represent time. <laughs> now what will happen is that as you start to do many things, you may find that this is actually not a very convenient internal way to store time. So suppose you want to, for example, find difference between two times, right? But anyway, Let's write this as, 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 as we expect. So I am going to um, return the time using self.hour, self.minute, and self.second. Is it hours or minutes or minute or second? What, what is more logical? Maybe hours, minutes, and seconds. Now we run into the problem that this will be too long to type, but all right. Okay, so you can immediately try to create an object. And you can say that it is uh, 2, 38, 12, okay. So, uh, so far so good. Now, what are functions that we want to add to time? What if I want to add a number of minutes? I want to know what time is something is if you add 10 minutes to it, right? Or you can add two times, right? 
So let's create addition of two times. So how do I add two times now? Think about it for a second and tell me. So you have, you know, 2, 15, 24 plus 3, 14, uh, 55. I'm going to use modulus for sure at the end. But before that, can I add 2 plus 5? So I add the seconds, and then if it's above this, I add it to the minutes. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, something like that. That to me is more meaningful, right? If, if everything was seconds, then it would be easier. So I can do... Um, So I can do total seconds one will be self dot seconds plus self dot minutes times 60, then self dot hours times 60 times 60, right? Is that correct? Right, something like that. Then total seconds two, then I can have other dot seconds plus self that uh, other that minutes times 60 plus other that hours times 60 times 60. Then I'm going to add these two. <coughs> then I'm going to take this and convert it to a um, hours, minutes, and seconds. Construct a new object and return it. Right? So, um, so the hours are going to be total divided by 3600. Then uh, minutes are going to be, all right, I'm losing interest in this. So the point is that I, I've started to feel like I am not doing this right because this is taking way too long. Okay, so, um, so one of the things that I notice is that I have taken this and done it two times, right? So I have already repeated this, and I'm likely to repeat this over and over. So to me, if I'm going to repeat this over and over, it should probably be part of my class. It should be a function that converts between one representation to another, right? I need to take the time represented as r minute second, represented the total number of seconds, and I need to do the reverse. So instead of doing it like this, I should probably first write a function that converts between these two, then I'm going to re-repeat this one. So I, I'm not liking this too much. First, I need to rethink my class to convert between these two. So one of the things that I can do is I can write a function <coughs> called convert, and it will take our minute second, and it will return our times 60 times 60 plus minute times 60 plus second, okay? Does this function actually have self in it? No. This is a function that you really cannot call outside of the uh, class, but you should be able to call inside the class. I'm hoping that this is actually possible, so we will see. Um, so I am not going to store any of this stuff. I am going to simply store this. Okay. Of course, this is not going to work anymore, but we will talk about that in a second. So, um, so I am going to get rid of this for a second. And I am going to just return self.seconds, just to see if this so far works. Okay. So let's try this again. Alright, 
I guess that does not work. That was that was nice, but it didn't work. Okay, I forgot how to do that. I apologize. All right, let's try again. I am not invincible. Invincible. I uh, I try it and then I figure out how to debug it later. Okay. Um, and this is telling me it actually returned a non-string, so I make sure that it actually works. So now I need another function that takes the seconds and converts it to minute, hour, and um, seconds. So let's do the re reverse one. This time I'm going to write a convert that actually uses self, okay? But now I'm going to find our minute second. So I'm going to take self.seconds divided by 3600, that should be the hours. And then I'm going to take self.seconds, subtract from it hour times 3600. Does this look like one of the homeworks you did when you had to find the different digits in reverse? And I'm going to divide that by 60. And then the second should be self.seconds minus hour times 3600 minus minute times 60. And then I'm going to return our minute and second. Okay. Now, now I'm going to actually do this, our minute second is going to be self.convert, and then I'm going to print this. Now, I have no idea, because I actually have not tested this before class, if this works. Does this look logically correct? Okay. So, there are a few things that are kind of new, right? So this one is just a simple one. So we can, in fact, test this and see, okay? So we have T1 like this. Now we can try T1.seconds, stored as such. Now I can try T1.convert, and it seems to correctly convert, okay? So far, so good. So then print T1 should actually use this information. So now in, T, in print T1, I'm actually calling the function itself, right? So because now I'm calling the object itself, I just call it as self.convert because I don't know the name of the variable. Whatever is the variable, I just want to access the object itself. So this is why, this is how I call a function. In the same way, here is how I call find an attribute. This is an attribute of, this is a function of the same thing. So this should work the same way as it did. Okay, so now let's rewrite add because I was so bored with that. So let's redo this one. Okay, so if I were to add, okay, I am going to find basically this. Now, I can also return an object that just has this, okay? And then I can just return it, okay? What problem can this possibly have? And I can do the same thing with, okay, let's do this. So this work for you? So what I'm doing is, oh yeah, this is not actually correct. 
Well, what I'm doing is that I am actually calling time to create a new object uh, with the new value, right? But it doesn't work because it actually does not create an object with just seconds, right? So um, what I should do is, in fact, I should first find the number of seconds I need. Now I need to convert it to um, R minute and second, right? So I'm going to run this like this. So. I could not call this function because this is actually for a um, for an object itself. So I am using a different one like this. Okay, I just have to figure out how to call the uh, object, how to how to write a function that doesn't call itself. But anyway, um, and then now I'm going to create a new object, new time object that has this hour, this minute, and this second, right? So create a new object calling time. Okay, now that should kind of work. Okay, obviously this is not correct either. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to say total is equal to this, and then do this, and something like this, okay? All right. Does this work? So let's say, for example, I create 228, and then uh, let's say 1, 12, 56, and I want to print T1 plus T2, and it says this tree. I think that there's a way to put zero here. 0.2D, it's supposed to put a zero. Anyway. Um, so this is, it says three minutes, 41, three hours, 41 minutes, and eight seconds. Does that look okay so far? There's clearly a problem with printing, but we will do that in a second, okay? So is there a bug with this code, however? Can you create a time that is greater than the biggest possible time? So what happens if I have time one is uh, 21, 28, and time two is 22, uh, 32, oops, sorry. So is there a 42 hours? No, so what should I do? I've, I've computed it. If you add these two, it's 42 hours. But there are no 42 hours in regular time, right? If something is greater than 24, that's where you do your mod, okay? Now, you can put it right here, right? You can say that if hour is greater than 24, then hour is our mod 24. But that, to me, does not belong in the add function, because that should be true any time you create a time object. If you give it greater than 24 hours, I should probably um, first do this, right? And um, no, yeah, I should do this, right? Yep, I should, I should do this, there we go, right? I should probably just make sure that when you create a time, it should never be greater than 24. Um, what should happen if it's greater than 60? Right? So there are lots of questions. What can happen with subtraction? It could be negative, right? So now what would you do for a negative time? Negative time is something we all wish. That happened. 
So you can choose to return it as negative, but I have a sense that it will mess up my computation, will it? So what will happen if you do T1 minus T2? Or T2 minus T1? Doesn't seem to work. They are the same? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, that, that does explain it. Um, T2. Okay. It's negative uh, nine hours. Okay. I am not sure if this will actually work, but um, you know, we can work about that later. Okay. Do we want to have negative time or not? Can time be negative? Would be nice if it was. Um, so what do you want to do with negative time? So you can do two things. You, you, you are now the designer of this class. You can say that if the time is negative, I'm going to simply return zero, because it cannot be negative. Or I can start to, with, start to subtract it from the day before, right? So it's going to now take the time, seconds, and then subtract it from the total hours of the day before, right? And then use that. So I can do something like, for example, if seconds, if, um, if total, so we can actually do it right here. If total is less than zero, then I am going to take total and I'm going to add to it the total number of seconds on the previous day, so which would be how many? So it is 24 times 3600, right? So, um, so basically it now becomes the day before. The problem with this, though, is that you don't know if this is actually uh, visible to the programmer because you don't know if they actually understood what you were doing. But you know, there are different choices you can make, and that will define what you have. Hopefully, this is not a horrible one. But OK, so let's now, let's now talk about how you use these classes in other programs. So we are going to do uh, some new program, which will have uh, a few number of things. First, we are going to use the classes we have just defined. And two, we are going to define new classes. And three, we are going to use those classes to actually solve the lab that we did in 15 minutes or less. Okay. So um, remember this uh, file that we used in lab five. This was the Yelp file, right? In the Yelp file, basically, you had this complex object. So you had the name of a business, latitude and longitude. You had an address. You had a URL. You had a category. And then you had all these reviews. So and you were writing this program, and you had to remember that location 0 is the name, location 1 is the uh, Latitude, location two is the longitude. It's kind of complicated, right? So, and you were doing the same with the Doctor Who file that you, I'm sure, all hated eventually, because you had to remember the first is the name of the villain, the last is something, right? Ultimately, this is very complex, and you want to make your programs easy to write and easy to read. <coughs> so, obviously, what I can do is I can create a class to store these objects. So I can create a class that stores a single business. So I want to create a class called business. Okay. And then we can decide what attributes it should have. So what attributes should it have? Obviously, it has a name, a latitude, and longitude. 
it has a um, address URL category and reviews okay it has lots and lots of information so you could do this all as a single uh, dictionary and in that dictionary store all of this and dictionary would be enough if you didn't have anything special to do but if you use a class you can now define interesting functions that maybe make your life even easier so it will simplify things for you. So the first thing we will do is we will uh, initialize this object. Is long a keyword? I think it's a keyword. Oh, yes. And just to be simple, I'm going to also write a print method. I will just return the name. Okay. I'm just putting a skeleton so I can read and then use this. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to write a simple uh, function to test this. So I'm going to read one line from it. I'm going to uh, split it on this guy. Okay. So and then I'm going to create a single business by taking this object and returns. So m.0, m.1. So this is name, latitude, longitude. Address, URL, category, right? So you have name, latitude, longitude, address, URL, category, and everything else. Okay, I need to save this in the same file as uh, my Yelp. So I'm going to call this yelp.py. Okay. All right. And in fact, if you wanted to really be um, sure that I'm doing this correctly, you can return a few things. Yeah, it doesn't ask. All right, fine. I'll figure that out later. So, and you can make your print method much nicer. So you can, for example, you can print the name. Then you can put a new line and you can uh, put a tab and then you can print the address and then put another new line. And then you can say average score, which we will later compute. Right now we are not computing. Name, address, score. Okay. So, okay. So now let's do a little bit more. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the scores that are all strings and I'm going to convert them to integers so I can find the average and you can print the average. So Instead of just doing this, I am going to first convert the reviews into integer. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to do for i in range length of reviews. Reviews of i is int of reviews of i. Okay. So this way I know that self.reviews is actually an integer. Okay, maybe let's call these scores, so score sounds better. Okay, and now I can actually print the average score <coughs> by taking the total of self.scores and dividing it by the length of self.scores. So now I'm actually making this a little bit more interesting. Total is not defined, so it was a sum. Okay. Now I'm also able to print, when I print the uh, business, the name, the location, and the average score. If I wanted to actually have a nicer way of computing the average score, which is what we did in the lab, I can write a function right there for this. Um, so I'm going to call that average score. And this is the function that we wrote in lab five. So the idea was that if length of uh, self.scores was less than uh, three, I am going to return this, else I'm going to actually take the scores, I'm going to sort them, I'm going to drop the top and the smallest and then return those. But I don't want to actually change my data because what if I wanted to print the scores in the order they were in the file? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a copy of this. So I'm going to create a copy of scores. I am going to sort this one. <laughs> And now, I am going to return sum of s, but only starting from the first going up to the last. So the smallest and the largest I'm going to uh, get rid of. And then, of course, since I removed two things, I'm going to divide that by two. Okay. So now I don't actually have to do this. I can simply call self dot average score. Okay. So now I don't have to worry about writing this complex function every time I need to find a score. It's part of the uh, class. The other thing that I can do is instead of using latitude and longitude as two things, I can actually use the point to the object that I just created. Right, it's stored in this file called point2d. And I can create a point2d object, and I can use all sorts of other things that these objects have, like distance. I, I was actually going to put another distance function, which we can do later. But I don't want to actually rewrite everything. I want to use this class to store the latitude and longitude. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first import that class into my file so I can use it in my file. So what I'm going to do is I am going to import point 2d. Okay. Now this just tells me that everything in point 2d file should belong here. So if I was using this instead of these two, I can now create a new object called, a new attribute called location for a business, but the location itself is not a, you know, it's a new object. It is point to D of latitude and longitude. Is latitude the X? Is, is latitude Y? All right. This is the thing that okay. I am not a. Uh, I am. This is. This was one of my weakest topics as a student. Right. 
Now the problem is this. This is a naming thing. Okay. It will tell me that the module is not callable. Okay, because point 2D is also happens to be the name of the module, but not the name of the class, right? So if I wanted to get the class point 2D inside the module point 2D, I have to write this. Okay. If this is confusing to you, let me do a different thing for you. So let's take this point 2D and let's save it in a different file. And I'm going to call that points.py file. Okay. And I'm going to here import the points file as a module. And then from the points file, I am going to use the point 2D class to create a long longitude and latitude. And I will have this location attribute to be of that type. Okay, so that one works. If you don't want to do it like this, because this is now every time you have to write the class, you have to write module name and class name, you can bring the class into your program as if it was defined inside your program. So if you wanted to do that, you would not use this. You would actually use from points import point to D. So it says, go to that file, find the definition of point to D, and import it into my code as if it was defined inside my code. You don't want to do that for many different things, but for classes, this makes sense. Because for classes, you're not going to define the same class in, the sa in many different files. But for functions, you don't want to have the same function defined in a different place to overwrite your function. So generally, you use this for classes. Since I now brought it as if it was here, this should actually work. Okay, so these are two different ways you can do import, but ultimately it is the same. So for example, now I can write the location by calling the function for the points, right? So uh, you can say, here is the location. So in, in addition to this, now I am going to have self.location, which happens to be a point. As a point, it has an str thing that actually will allow me to print it, which I should write as str of self.doc. There we go. <coughs> Numbers, ah, okay, all right, so. Here's a, here's a bug that I created earlier this morning when I was playing with this, and I created the same bug. Um, so here's a good idea for you to think for a second what could possibly be the reason, because I don't want to write it again. It's a bug that I write every single time, so I'm sure you will do the same. All right, so when I try to print the point, it tries to take the x and the y value and encode it as point percent d because I expect that the latitude and longitude should be numbers, right? Okay. Are they numbers here in my uh, program? I read it from a file. I split it. Then I return it here, but I never return it. I never convert it to a float, right? So, in fact, these are still strings. That's why that's the problem. Okay. All right, so now that seems to work. And of course, like in all debugging, I basically changed something drastically because it didn't work. So let's see if this actually works. That still works, right? So when you, do, when you debug, you start to dismantle your program. And then when you find out what the error was, bring back whatever you took out, okay? Um, so now, 
So now that I have a way to do some basic things, why don't I read every single line from my file into a list of all businesses so I can do some fun stuff. So for example, I am going to create a list called businesses. And then I'm going to read every single line converted to a business. And then I'm going to add this business to my list. So what can I do? For example, I can um, then ask for the name of a business, find the information, and print it to you. So um, I can ask for name of a business. I can do something like this. So I can search for um, a business by its name. And if I find it, I print it out for you with the score. But if I want to tell you that if the business is not found, the business is not found. Okay, This method will not work because I need to also keep track of whether I found it or not. So what I can do is I can say, found is false, and if I find it, I'm going to set it to true. Now when I exited the loop, I can check whether I actually have found it or not. So, um, sorry, so if not found, print business is not found. Okay. So now I have two options. I can search for a business, or I can tell you it is not found. Um, what if I want to do this in a loop, as many as possible, I look up businesses. Uh, I can put it in a while loop. So I need to take this one into my while loop too. So now I need to put in my um, so if name is equal to stop, I'm going to break. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to search for it and then print you whether it's found or not. Okay. So first thing I do is to check if it actually stops. It does stop, so now I can ask Caravalli. Okay. Um, now, when we come back, we are going to add a few other things. So a couple of things that you realize that you can make the address a bit nicer. In fact, I can make the address a whole class where I can print it in many different ways. I can write a distance function that can actually find real distance. So I'm going to try playing with some of these on uh, Thursday, and then we are going to do a couple more other complex things. <laughs>